Read a lot, write a lot. That's the advice we get as writers. In fact, famous author after famous author after famous author after famous author gives this same advice over and over and over. What you hear is that the big key to unlocking your writing and leveling up your writing to that masterwork level is to read a lot and write a lot. Unfortunately, it's complete bullshit. In this video, I'm going to explain to you why that advice is bullshit. And then by the end of the video, I'm going to give you a really clear way to turn that advice into actual helpful advice that will make you a better writer. So if you just look at this logically, it doesn't make any sense. The fact that all you have to do is read a lot and write a lot, and that's how you're going to become a great writer. There's a lot of people out there reading a lot and writing a lot, and they're not great writers yet. And this is what we see at StoryGrid. I'm the CEO and publisher at StoryGrid, and I talk to writers all the time, and most of them read a lot and write a lot. They've been doing that a long time, but they're not great writers yet. And they definitely haven't published something that they're proud of. So the problem with all of these famous authors that are giving this advice over and over and over is that they're running into this idea of the survivorship bias. So what is that? Survivorship bias occurs when we focus on the survivors of a particular process and overlook those that have failed. They can lead to false conclusions since the failures are not considered in the analysis. So what happens is, is all of these famous writers are saying this and giving this advice, and we're listening to them because they're these famous writers, but the problem is a lot of people are doing this and they're not getting to the results that these writers have. And so what that means is, at the worst version, they're lying, but let's not assume they're lying. Let's assume that these people are really great at something, but they don't know how they do it. And this is really, really common. I've been working with writers for almost 15 years. I know a lot of people that are good at things that cannot explain how they do what they do. Being good at something is completely different than being able to teach something. This is why Tiger Woods, one of the greatest golfers of all times, always has a golf coach. Being able to see a problem and teach is a different skill set than actually being able to do the thing. This is why if you go to masterclass.com and you see all of these awesome classes by all of these famous writers and then you watch the class and you get through it and what exactly have you learned? Are you able to actually iterate on your writing? Have you leveled up your writing? I mean, they talked for a long time and said a lot of things, but what I have found going through these because I want to learn writing too is they talk a lot but don't actually say much because they're talking about their process, but then they're leaving out parts because, again, they don't understand how they do what they do. They came to it intuitively. And so when you ask them, they want to be helpful. They want to give good advice. And so that's when they look back and they say, well, you know, I guess what I did was I read a lot and, and I wrote a lot. And then, you know, I became this writer. So I believe just fundamentally this doesn't work, right? Like you just can look out in the world at all the people doing this and that most of them don't turn into great writers. And so therefore that is not the path, but let's just look at it of why it doesn't work. The problem is it's too random. Imagine if you wanted to learn to play the guitar and you've never played the guitar before. You've never watched a class on playing the guitar. And, uh, and all you decide to do is I'm going to pick up a guitar I'm going to put some strings on it. I'm going to try to like turn the little knobs at the top until they sound, I guess, okay. And then all I'm going to do is listen to music and then like randomly put my fingers in places and try to learn how to play the guitar. Well, that's not going to work. You're going to get frustrated because it's too random. You're just kind of listening to great music and you can get great music in your head. But when you pick up a guitar and you try to put your fingers in the right place and tune the, uh, tune the strings the right way, it just doesn't sound the same. And actually, that's even a better version of what happens to us writing because most of us, if we hear great music and then we play a note, we can tell it's wrong like immediately, right? You hear that it's wrong. But with writing, what happens is that you can't, quote, hear that what you're writing is wrong. And so you're writing and writing and writing, and you can't tell that what you're doing isn't working and doesn't work. And so you are reading a lot and you're writing a lot, 
but it's not actually going to get you there because it's far too random. Read a lot, write a lot. It sounds super quippy. It's easy to say. It goes on social media really easily, but it doesn't work. So we're going to get rid of that and let's replace it with something that will actually be helpful. So let's start with that first one. Read a lot. What can we do instead of read a lot that will actually help us become a better writer? So instead of read a lot, let's study. And instead of just studying, we're going to study masterworks. Now, what is a masterwork? Masterworks are those books that have endured over time. They are operating at the top of their genre. They're the books that we come back to over and over and over and that sell and sell and sell. And what I recommend is you find a book that you love in the genre that you're trying to write in. Now, if you want to learn about genre, we've got a video about that. It's down in the description. You want to pick a book that's at the top of the genre that you want to write in, that's been around a long time, that readers love, that people come back to over and over and over. And then now you're going to study that book. All right, so how do you study this book, right? So it might be really long. You might have a book that's 100,000, 200,000, 300,000 words long. Like how do you actually study a book and learn from it, right? So we have this advice that floats out there. One, you can read it and you should obviously read it. You probably have already read it. But this is where StoryGrid really shines is we have lots of tools for you to study masterworks. So we have the five commandments of storytelling. We have our spreadsheet. We have the full scap. We have the six editor core questions. We've got a lot of great tools that will help you deep dive into the masterwork that you want to learn from. You can go to storygrid.com. Just scroll down. There's a section there that just shows you our tools. Just dive in there and get started. But you don't want to just study the macro view of the story. That's important. You want to look at the story as a whole. But then you also just want to study one scene. So find one of the best scenes in the book and spend your time looking at how the dialogue is crafted, how that scene is crafted, how long the scene is, how often it progressively complicates. Again, we have lots of tools for these at storygrid.com. But the idea here is that you take this one great work that you love, that if you could wipe off the name off that cover and put your name on it, it would be that book. And then study that book and actually learn. So don't just randomly read a bunch of different books. Take the time to pick a great book and masterwork and spend time studying and learning how that master writer crafted a story that has endured the test of time. So we're going to get rid of this idea of just read a lot, and instead we're going to replace it with study masterworks. So next, we got to look at that second part of that bad advice, the write a lot part. Now, if you don't have a habit of writing, this idea of just writing X number of words a day, I'm going to write 500 words a day, 1,000 words a day, 2,000 words a day, that's not necessarily bad advice, right? If, you not, if you're not writing at all, switching to writing every day is building up that habit and actually getting yourself writing. But pretty quickly, once you build up that habit, we need to look at this idea that you're just writing every day. Because if you just keep writing every day, you're going to solidify bad habits. You're going to actually, when I was talking about earlier with the guitar example, and you like you train your ear to hear bad music, If you keep writing every single day, but that writing isn't good writing, you're actually training your ear to bad writing. And so we want to get rid of this idea that for years and years and years, you're just churning out 500, 1,000, 2,000 words a day, hoping at some point it will turn into great writing. Again, too random. So we're going to look at a better way to do that. So instead of just write a lot, we're going to practice our skill work. And we're going to look at the skills that go into writing and we're going to get really good at those before we try to create this masterpiece of writing that we're trying to do that will leave our legacy. So what does it mean to practice our skill work? Because a lot of times when we're talking about writing, people are like, well, you know, you have to find your voice and you have your own style. But what we've found when we study masterworks here at StoryGrid is you can take a book like Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen and Fight Club by Chuck Palahniuk, which could not have two more different styles. But if you peel back the style, they're doing the same things. There is the same skills showing up in both types of writing. In fact, we see this over and over and over when we study masterworks. 
So the example I'd like to use is, let's say you want to be a great woodworker. So you want to build a beautiful table or a beautiful chair. Well, what goes into this? Well, you've got to learn how to use the tools, right? You got to know how to use a hammer, a plane, a saw, a sander. There's all of these tools that, yes, you can see in your head what you're trying to create. But if you don't know how to use the actual tools, you're never going to be able to create them. So imagine if a master woodworker came along and said, hey, for the next six months, you're gonna work alongside me. And I'm gonna show you how to use each of the tools. And then at the end, you'll have the skills you need to go build whatever you want. But for these next six months, you're gonna build what I want you to build. Now, if you are truly serious about becoming a great woodworker, I think that's a killer deal. I give up just six months and I learn all of the skills I need so I can go create the thing I actually want to create. And I think writers so many times are focused on like, well, I wanna write my book, I wanna write my book, I wanna say what I've gotta say. So they just write and write and write and write, but then it never actually turns into great writing. And so what we try to do at StoryGrid is teach writers the basic skills. And what are those skills? The first overarching skill you've gotta learn is how to write a great scene. The scene is the building block of a book. If you can't write a great scene, that compels the reader all the way through to the end of the scene and gets them to say what happens next, then you have no business writing an entire book. If you can't get a reader to be excited to read and finish your scene, why are you going to write 60 scenes that don't work? So the first overarching skill you need to learn is how to write a great scene. But even looking at a scene, there's a lot of stuff that goes into that. How to write great dialogue, how to get your five commandments of storytelling in there, how to focus on your objects of desire, how to make sure a value shifts by the end, how to make sure you get exposition in without info dumping, how to write great action. Like all of these things go into writing a scene, but you've got to focus on the skill work that goes in to writing a single scene before you try to go on to write an entire manuscript. And then even talking about this idea of focusing on writing a scene brings up this idea of how do you learn a complex skill like writing? So there's lots of studies on this. There's lots of information out there so you can go Google it. But it's this idea of deliberate practice. And deliberate practice is basically three different steps. So the first step is you take a big complex skill and you break it down into a small part that you can actually focus on. That's step one. Step two is to practice that skill. So you don't practice the big whole thing that you're trying to learn. You're trying to practice that one skill that you're focusing on. And then the third part, and this is the part that writers get wrong constantly, is you have to have a short feedback loop. So what does that mean? That means you try to do something, and then somebody who knows what they're talking about looks at what you just tried to do and then gives you feedback and then you try again. But here's how most writers do it. The first mistake I see is writers just write every day, right? That's what, write a lot. Write 500 words a day, 1,000 words a day. And I, I see stuff on Twitter where people are like, it's 500 days in a row that I've written. And I'm like, again, that's good. But like, has anybody looked at any of that writing to tell you whether or not it's good? So your feedback loop is now 500 days, like that's too long. Think about again, if you're learning the guitar, imagine if you played the wrong note and you didn't know you were playing the wrong note and you just kept playing the wrong note for 500 days. The other mistake I see writers make is write entire manuscripts before they get any feedback on any of their writing or any of their scene work. And it's the same thing where the feedback loop is too long. And so you've got to shorten that feedback loop. So write a scene at most and then get somebody that knows what they're talking about and knows what they're doing to look at your scene, tell you what you did right, what you did wrong, and then you go try again. And then they tell you what you did right and then what you did wrong and then you try again. And this is how you get better at writing. You practice skill work and you practice it in this deliberate practice sort of way. Now, how do you find somebody to give you that kind of feedback? Well, this is why we have certified editors, StoryGrid certified editors, But also, if you have a friend that is learning this alongside of you, maybe you guys can learn together and keep giving each other feedback. But you've got to shorten your feedback loop. This is the mistake I see so many writers make, and they literally waste years and years of their life just writing and writing and writing and writing, and they never actually get to where they want to be. So we're going to get rid of that idea of just write a lot, and we're going to replace it with deliberately practice skills. So if we go all the way back to the beginning and we look at this advice, read a lot, 
write a lot. Hopefully by now you understand that is not going to get you where you want to be. And we're going to replace it with study masterworks and deliberately practice skills. Now it's not as quippy, but it will get you where you want to go. If you like this video, definitely subscribe to our channel, hit that bell to make sure that you get notified for all our future videos. There's lots of great links down in the description helping you take what you learned in this video further. Make sure you go to storygrid.com, sign up for the newsletter. That's where you get everything that we're doing here at StoryGrid. But thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.